start with plant number three on your list. This is Ribes sanguineum. Okay, it's in the Gracilariaceae family. A lot of people, uh, for some reason, like to put it in the uh, rose family, in Rosaceae, uh, perhaps because during springtime it does have quite showy uh, flowers. Okay, we're actually looking at uh, flowering current a little bit later in the summer, so it's done with its flowering. Uh, it's still obviously got its leaves on, um, but we've passed from flowering, so uh, uh, Ribe sanguineum comes in whites or pinks or cherry reds, okay? Um, and they are born in a, a pendulous raceme, so that is a branched uh, infl or an unbranched inflorescence where the flowers are born off of the inflorescence. We're now at a time of the year when the fruit has set, so you can see it's got this uh, purple, uh, blue-black fruit with a glaucous bloom on the uh, outer surface. So this is that waxy coating uh, that's typical for Ribes sanguineum. Okay? The leaves in flowering current are alternately arranged. Okay? They often are born on these little short pins or short shoots, okay? and they are uh, matte green, so they're not glossy, and they typically have three or five lobes, as you can see here. They are uh, somewhat irregularly uh, serrate or crenate along the margins, and when you crush them, they do have a distinct fragrance. Again, it's actually a little bit stronger early in the season when they have the uh, uh, fresher glands. Okay? Um, regarding its uh, adaptability and location in the landscape, this plant is really impressive uh, when it's in flower. Okay? It's uh, attractive to uh, hummingbirds, so we have our native uh, in the Pacific Northwest, we have Anna's hummingbird, which is actually here year-round. So this is a, uh, a plant that it flowers very early in the spring. It's one of the, 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 what we call harbingers of spring. So it flowers very early before the leaves emerge. It's attractive to those hummingbirds. It's also, if there are bees active, you'll also see uh, bees in here. But for all intents and purposes, this plant is really grown uh, for its flowers. After it flowers, uh, the leaves are not particularly attractive. It can have issues with uh, powdery mildew, uh, with aphids uh, are a huge issue for us here in the Pacific Northwest. And overall, if you look at this plant in the landscape, it gets rangy. It requires some pretty uh, consistent pruning to keep it in check. Um, and so uh, I, I do like this plant. It is uh, fairly well adapted to our Mediterranean climate, such that it, uh, once it's established, uh, it is fairly uh, drought tolerant. Um, but uh, it doesn't tolerate uh, humidity. So uh, this is a plant that uh, due to white pine blister rust, you actually can't ship it to the East Coast. So it's really just gonna be grown in the Pacific Northwest. And again, if you did get it to a place like Georgia or Florida, the heat and humidity really would uh, take this plant out. But nevertheless, it has its place in a, uh, in a mixed border or on the edge of the cultivated and naturalized area. So this is more of a naturalizing uh, type of shrub. So this is uh, Ribe sanguineum flowering currant.